Welcome back to Building Your Life podcast with John Browning. My name is Doug Sandler. John, welcome back to another exciting week. And and I you're in you're in Florida, aren't you? I am in Florida, yeah. And I'm today in sunny, I'm in Florida anyway. Yeah. It, 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 today you are. Well, I'm in sunny California and uh the weather finally has um has cleared up a little bit. It's been uh it's been mostly rainy. It's been a really w- rainy winter in a in a state that absolutely needs it, but I am I am ready for spring. And I know that we are in April now and we are all ready for spring. It, it's always summertime in Florida though, isn't it? Yeah, just about. Yeah. I mean, if it drops below 50, people are like bundling up and <laughs> I, know, and I went hiking sweaters and toboggans. <laughs> I went I went hiking this morning. It was probably in the upper 50s, low 60s. I was wearing my down jacket and gloves. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure East Coast are transplanted onto the uh, onto the West Coast. Hey, uh, I don't know about you in Florida, what you're seeing, but I know you're probably very similar town that that I'm in, in that probably every other car in my town is a uh, is a Tesla or an electric car of some sort. I mean, with gas, you know, hovering around the five dollar mark, everybody is uh, is taken taken electric to the uh, to the next level. I want to talk about it for a second because you you gave me some interesting fodder for a conversation here, and it was talking about you know, the market, what's going on with the market and, and Tesla stock. So why don't you give me a little summary of what you were talking about? And then let's dive into, into the subject matter a little bit. Yeah. You know, I was just, uh, I, you know, when you and I were talking before, and this is not investment advice, this is strictly opinion and information that we hope you can use to help you build your best life. But we were talking about a report that I had recently read where uh, a particular analyst had given Tesla a downgrade. And the reason, the major reason that they cited was that rates were higher and might limit access to capital for Tesla. And I just found that to be amusing because Tesla, if you read their balance sheet, they have uh, just billions in cash. What do they need money for? They don't need to raise money for anything. And I just found that odd. The only thing that I can think of that maybe, because I didn't read his entire report, uh, full disclosure, the only thing I can think about is he was talking about the consumer having to pay more to finance the car. But again, given that Tesla is now in California, is the top selling car. It beat uh, Toyota Camry this past oh my year. Gosh. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just don't see it. Right. And- well, I I remember I remember reading a review. This is years and years ago before Tesla was really huge on the market as as much as it is right now. I remember reading a review of the car and it said it's not just the greatest electric car out on the market right now. It's the greatest car on the market right now. I don't know if you've ever been in one. I mean, we took a an Uber from uh, from LAX uh, back to our to our car, which we parked off site since LAX charges some mm-hmm. ridiculous amount on site to to park your car. And uh, a Tesla Y came and picked us up. So it was the person driving the car. It wasn't completely automated, but uh, just just sitting in that car and feeling the the all of the creature comforts and looking at all of the things. And this is not a car review, but it, what's what's amazing is just how um, how wonderful a car it is. And and I didn't care that it was an electric car or or you know a, uh, a combustion engine car. It's just a neat. It's a neat car. I couldn't, not that that has anything to do with how much cash they need in order to fund whatever they have going, but I can see why they have billions of dollars in the bank. It's just a great car. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could go on, I could do like three or four episodes just on Tesla and Tesla stock and the fact that it's not actually a car company, which people tend to think of it as a car company, but it is much, much more than that. And tends to not necessarily get get credit for all the other cool stuff that they're doing. I mean, it's um, run by a, a guy that's a little loony, but <laughs> well, that's true, time. right? I mean, <laughs> when you I think when you're that smart, it's like it's by definition you're a little well, we'll just call it different, right? <laughs> Let's call it eccentric. All right. He's uh, <laughs> right? Elon Musk, he's an, an eccentric guy. Anybody's got to be eccentric to to buy a company like Twitter, <laughs> you know, so Yeah, right. Right. All right. So, so talk to me about, talk to me about the stock, why it's important. Why isn't it important, uh, you know, about this downgrade? Yeah. You know, and, and this is not really about Tesla, right? This is about the idea that, you know, it's hey, I'm glad the guy wrote the report, right? Because that's what it is. You need people on both sides to really make a market and it allows, you know, me to capitalize on, on things that, that I think are important, but the, the important thing that I wanted to point out on this is that even in a down market, in a bear market, 
there are significant opportunities to profit and to position yeah. yourself to profit. Maybe not right now, maybe not today. And we talked about sequence of returns risk, right? In our last episode. So if you don't have to worry about having that money tomorrow or within the next three to five years, there are some phenomenal opportunities. We are seeing companies like Tesla, right? So Fed can raise rates all they want. And yes, that'll in, in fact impact consumers and it is impacting consumers and reduce demand maybe for their products. But as innovation takes hold, and we did a whole series on innovation, right? People are going to, frankly, need, not just want, but the, eventually they're going to need to upgrade to, to a certain different products and things that they need as they do these particular companies that have sometimes no debt right. and have actual cash on the books. And I'm not making this up of 50% of their overall market value, some, some of them a little bit more. And they're involved in key innovation uh, sector spots in the market uh, that are going to be and, and are already heavily needed. They're making sales, they're making revenue, they have cash on, on to, to survive and thrive, even if those sales were reduced significantly, but they've been beaten up just as if they didn't have all those things. And that's because of the emotions of the market and everyone sort of following the other folks off the cliff. What's, what's your opinion in the, in the scenario where you got, where you have a company like Tesla or any company that might have gotten a downgrade by, uh, you know, somebody that would be kind of, you know, directing the market just a teeny little bit. It seems when somebody does that, they almost know that that stock market, that stock is going to go down, you know, to continue buying that stock, you know, using the, what's the law of, is it called dollar cost averaging when you, when you continue yeah. just buying the stock, no matter what the, the price is, because you know, you're, you're actually buying more. Your your dollar takes you further. What's your opinion on on doing something like that when uh, when when it has when it gets a downgrade? Hey, you got a downgrade. Keep buying it. Now is actually the time to buy the stock. Yeah, and, and people make fun of that. Like especially recently, uh, people have been making fun of that. Yeah, well, your dollar cost averaged yourself all the way down during 2022, right? Listen, to it you know if history is any guide. Uh, you buy when there's blood in the streets, right, sir? Uh, sir, somebody. Yeah. Warren Buffett also said that, but it's it's been it's been said a lot of times, right? So I'm not the first person to say that. You you buy when there's blood in the streets, and yes, the danger in that is when you just say it and you oversimplify things. I talked about that in one of our mm -hmm. previous episodes too. So I don't want to oversimplify it. Like just just it goes down, buy it. If it goes down and there, nothing material has changed about it. Uh, if nothing, if nothing material has changed about their ability to repay debt or the fact that they have no debt or they haven't had like some major lawsuit or, or, uh, their CEO didn't, that was a key, right. key CEO didn't just like go away or something like that. If nothing like that has happened, it's a great time to purchase more of that company and write it back up when the emotions that the rest of the market is using kind of goes away and we go to a more normal market environment. It's a phenomenal way to build wealth. Just be careful if you're looking at companies like Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just just exactly. If they're, you know. if they're being innovated out of business, right? that's one to stay when you don't keep up. That's actually a great point, though. I, we should we should just spend a minute on. Yeah, that. go ahead. I because because that was the first thing that popped into my brain. It was like, yeah, if you have nothing else has changed within an organization, uh, continue to do that dollar cost averaging thing. If you have a company that's behind the times and never, you know, if IBM is still in the typewriter business, you know they had to evolve and change. Go back to our episodes on innovation and and here, you know, the companies that are disruptive are the ones that are are really, while it could be a risk, I mean, there are some good opportunities in the disruption market as well, but how do you, how do you time that? But anyway, go ahead, continue on your thought. So there've been a lot of companies over even my career, right? Let's just take my career, 32, I'm headed into 33 years in doing this, that have been, oh, you just buy that forever. You hold that forever. It's old blue and old faithful. One of those in my time was Xerox. Mm. 
One of those was uh, Kodak. Kodak. Oh, I was going to say Kodak. It's right where <laughs> I was going. One of those was GE. Yeah, yeah. And I said it, right? You know, way, way back. I was like, wow, if you don't have anything else you want to invest in, just invest in GE. They ran into problems, right? That the, it's, it's, and I'm careful when I use the term, the word never and always, right? Yeah. Yep. So there's never, never, and always, right? <laughs> think about that. Rewind that. Think about that for a yeah. second. So it is. It is very rare that there's a company that is truly a buy and hold forever. Matter of fact, maybe never. I mean, you've got things like Coke mm -hmm. that kind of have been around forever, and they have been able to do that. But what have they done? And they've they've consistently innovated and consistently profitable and consistently treat their shareholders, their owners, right. They're never withholding things, never lying to them. You know, you could er Enron, WorldCom, they, they lied to people, right? This is all it was. Kodak fell behind in terms, way behind in terms of innovation. All that, you know, that digital photography will never, never catch on. Well, the rear view mirror is so easy to be able to look into, but, but the, uh, the crystal ball is, is impossible to look into it. How do you know, you know, when you're in the, when you're in the hunt, you know, you don't feel the fleas. So, you know, you know, it's like very hard to determine at the time, nobody at, uh, at Kodak realized that they, you know, that they were making memories. They weren't actually making film. You know, if yeah. they actually realized that they were making memories, they would have moved on to digital impressions and all of the things that we need to, 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 you know, that we have today. Uh, and I'm sure there's a next thing, you know, Maxell no longer makes, uh, you know, cassette tapes anymore because there's nobody out there that, that needs cassette. Um, right. so, so how do you know those that are, that are not going down the, the, the path of innovation versus, uh, the companies that are actually doing it right? I think it really comes down to being to being constantly there, constantly researching, constantly. You know, I, I'm a nerd. I love to read about that stuff. And and there, I think we did this during our innov innovation uh, series that we did. Uh, what was the last month or whatever? It's also important not to get too excited about the innovation. So you have to have that balance, right? I mean, they've been talking about. We talked about graphene and that technology. We've been talking about that being the best thing since sliced bread for the past almost 20 years, mm -hmm. but they haven't been able to make it profitable and still really haven't been able to make it very profitable, but they're always like right there. So, so when do you invest and, and when do you see that company that used to be cutting edge is not, you, you just, you have to, you, you have to constantly be in it and it has to be your thing. And that's where I think it's important and yes, I'm biased, but it, it's, it's what I do, right? It's important to have somebody on your team that's working for you that constantly is in there. They're not too far over to the right or too far over to the left, but they're steady and they're, they're researching and doing this stuff literally every single day. Even on the weekends, I read this stuff for fun. So, All right, so if you want a fun nerd... <laughs> yes, he's, I'm a fun nerd, right? He's a he's a fun nerd that actually knows a, a thing or two about finance and advising. Uh text life L I F E to 321-421-5213. What will you get when you get that? You'll get John's uh his electronic digital business card. It will be sent directly to your phone or your um smart feature. You know, my mom just upgraded to the uh the the Apple S E I think it is. She's 90 years old. She has an Apple phone. It's the greatest thing. She could even get your digital business card. That's right. <laughs> so text life to three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one, three, get a hold of John and his team. And you'll find out exactly why he is the coolest man, the coolest nerd in town. So uh, thanks, John. Thanks, John. for <laughs> My sharing kids would them. disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, my, my kids would disagree that I'm actually a cool guy too. I don't think that I'm cool. They definitely know I'm not cool. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for hanging out another week, John. We'll see you again next week. All right. We'll see you next week.